Chapter four, cat and mouse. A series of brutal murders rocks the young elites in Kamurocho. Each victim was a founder of Crimson Lotus, a group of thugs for hire. Mikiko lost her only sister at the hands of these thugs, along with her foster parents. And to get revenge, she takes matters into her own hands. Like a phantom in the night, she attempts to kill the Crimson Lotus founders one by one. However, Ken Mochi lays an ambush for Mikiko, fearing that he might be her next target. Kaito bursts in on the scene and returns Mikiko back to safety. Seeing her safe and sound grants him a moment's repose, but their ordeal is far from over. Chapter four. Is she all right? They didn't do nothing to her, did they? Yeah, she's fine. She's just out. Oh, that's good. Get in, Kaito. We're taking Mikiko-san somewhere safe. Fine. But you better be ready to talk. Uh-huh. 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 As you can see, we're packing up. Excuse the mess. Crazy to think you were working for Mikiko all this time. Why didn't you just say so? Because we only found out who she really was the other day. We had no idea she was June's mom, either. Even though she's your client? All she gave us was a job, not her name. Said to protect a June Sadamoto. Kidnap him if you have to, but make sure he stays safe. That's the long and short of it. Oh. Yeah, I'm <laughs> what? not following. So, she hired some crooked detectives and left her husband and kid in the dark? Just, what the hell was she planning? I don't think she wanted them You're to get involved. You're aware she's been trying to get revenge on Crimson Lotus, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what if she needed a babysitter? After her deed was done, all she'd need to do was swing by here, pick up June, and hightail it out of Japan. Bullshit. <laughs> oh! Mikiko-san! Mikiko. Masaharu-san? Oh, you scared the piss out of me. You saved me again? <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot. I'm supposed to be your bodyguard, remember? <laughs> All right, Mikiko. Tell me. Spill the beans. Did you really kill those people? I intended to, but I never got the chance. Of course. What do you mean? How convenient. She hasn't no. killed a single person. Someone else was always one step ahead of me. No matter who I was after, they were killed before I even showed up. That's Ashizaki, weird. Ashizaki, the man in the burning building, same deal. He was dead by the time I arrived, and the place was already up in smoke. What? So then, you're saying you're not a killer after all. Correct. Though I'd give anything to do him in myself. Bastard. She's like, just let me at him, let me Any at him. Any idea who might be beating you to the punch? I wish I knew. I see. Uh, I feel like her husband is involved in this somehow. Like maybe he hired he's hired some, uh, some like high profile assassin or something. Like somehow he figured out. I don't know who. Or maybe it has something to do with the doctor. I don't know. Like how how would anybody know who her targets are? Who she's going after when and 
somebody powerful, somebody who has like, who can, has eyes on, on this, who can have eyes on her, I guess, at the very least. Hmm. So someone was going around and killing the founders of Crimson Lotus before Mikiko could get to him? But who else would hold a 14-year-old grudge against the guys who murdered Maho-chan and her family? Maybe it's Maho-chan. Maybe she's alive. I don't know. Mikiko, there's a lot I want to ask you. Are you okay to talk? It's a Yakuza game. It yeah. could be anything. It could be anyone. Nothing is too crazy to consider. You're guessing it's the cats? <laughs> could be, could be. Okay, ask about her motive. Why go after the Crimson Lotus founders? Was it really out of revenge? You mentioned Crimson Lotus being responsible for killing your family. What set this all into motion? It all started with Kenmochi. He was some kind of real estate broker way back when. He was making a fortune too. And that was before the bastard went after my parents. Right. Sadamoto-san mentioned something like that. Except, there was no evidence that they ever started the fire. The police pinned it all on the stalker and left it at that. Meaning it's up to me to get justice. Mikiko. Fate suicide. Two years back, you disappeared from your home, leaving a suicide note behind. The cops believe you killed yourself, but obviously you never did. Of course not. Besides, I can't just die and leave my son behind. It was Crimson Lotus who framed my suicide. Must have been convenient for them. I figured that was the case. But still, I can't believe you lived. They seriously pushed you off a waterfall? To this day, I have no clue how I survived. I was apparently knocked out at the time. Maybe I have the devil's luck. Anyway, when I woke up, Shirakaba-san had already taken me in. But I couldn't remember anything. What made your memories come back? I was watching TV. TV? Yes. And Kyoya's face was on there. Right. Your husband. He's been on TV a lot lately. I think I saw him on some morning show. She doesn't sound anyway, very affectionate when he was speaking about him. Celebrity, looking real smug. And that's when it all came back. What Crimson Lotus had done to me. And what they took away. Was there a reason you didn't contact your family right then? Sadamoto-san and June were worried like hell. <sighs> Let's just say I had some unfinished business to deal with a woman's family doesn't need to know about. Okay, then. Let's say you had taken down Crimson Lotus. Then what? You really meant for these dopes to take June? <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. That's all I can say. Whoa, what the hell? Was she seriously planning to run off with June overseas? Ask why she hired the Bato agency. Mikiko, why'd you want to stick June with these shady assholes? Because I needed a detective who'd take an anonymous job. I couldn't let it get out that I was still alive. The last thing I wanted was Crimson Lotus hunting me down first. And while detectives are supposed to maintain confidentiality, I can't just take that at face value. Besides, any legit detective would turn down some random woman asking to snatch up a specific kid right true guess that explains why you go to ex yakuza yeah except igarashi san figured out who i was midway through it all sorry i had to pry mikiko san but i always vet my clients i'll admit i was shocked to find out a dead woman hired us not to mention one who was hell-bent on taking out crimson lotus those disgusting bastards but hey that's the most exciting shit that's happened to us in years. Why wouldn't we go all in? I appreciate the help, Igarashi-san. 
Your people have had my back since day one. And Senda-san. I'm sorry my actions put you in harm's way. <laughs> How'd you even afford them after being gone two years? Senda likes her. cash stored away somewhere? After all I went through, I still managed to have my wedding ring. Pawn that off right away. Apparently it was enough to cover my fee, and then so. Coming from the guy who dropped 20 mil on a watch. Man, how much was that ring worth? She, her, she sounds very angry when she talks about her husband. Ask about June's real dad. You know, your boy June ended up paying me a visit. He wanted me to help him find his mom. I knew about that. Igarashi-san had told me he was with you. It didn't take me long to figure out what he was up to. He also thinks he's my son. Of course, I beg to differ, but... Uh... Right. That's all in his imagination. Yeah, that's what your husband said too. I guess June was reading your diary from when we were together. Got some ideas in his head. He said you wrote, I'll never see Masaharu-san again. And I should get this taken care of. I wrote that? Huh. I wonder what I meant. Come on, you really don't remember? How could I? That diary's as old as time. And even so... Wait. You don't mean... Bring in some bells? Remember that time I borrowed 50,000 yen while we were out shopping? I forgot to grab money from the bank. But there it was, the cutest coat I had ever seen. The last one on the rack. And of course, I left my card at home too. Oh, huh. know what? It does sound familiar. Hold on, don't tell me. Mm-hmm. I never gave you your money back after we split up. So, I was stuck thinking about whether or not I should pay you back. It would have been pretty awkward after the breakup we had. So yeah, that was... stressful. Oh. You mean to tell me that's what all that meant? Oh. If you want, I could give you 50 grand right now. Uh... No thanks. <laughs> really? Okay, you're the boss. That's a shitty consolation prize. I wanted a son. <laughs> Aww, Kaito. I wanted it. I wanted him to be your kid too, Kaito. I'm sorry. <sighs> He's psycho. We are kind of broke though. We are, but I mean, he turned down. Wow, how much? 20 million yen or some craziness? Mickey Coke must be exhausted. I think I got what I need. <sighs> Easy, Mikiko san. You might have put drugs in your system. Why don't you take a rest in the back? Sure. I'll take you up on that. Your guy, Sendo. He's into Mikiko, isn't he? That's obvious. That obvious, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What can I say? The guy's a big softy. I always tell him not to get too close to clients. What about you? Mikiko got your attention too? For a crooked detective, I'd say you're pretty devoted. Maybe I am. I've always respected fearless women like her. And besides, it's devotion that got our customer satisfaction rate topping 80%. That said, the guarantee applies to real customers only. Suckers don't get the same deal. <laughs> Corrupt and methodical. Gotta have a system, right? Huh? Damn, guess Satomoto-san's a popular man in his field. Mikiko did say he'd been appearing on a bunch of TV lately. Hey, Kaito. You think Mikiko-san's into sweets? Oh, yeah. If memory serves, she always liked dessert with her coffee. 
Noted. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this guy. Kaito here. What's up? Guess what? I was able to salvage the data from that hard drive, damaged as it was. Ooh, Tsukumo always oh, coming shit. in clutch. Nice going, man. Anything useful on there? <laughs> well, I did find something intriguing. Scans of some under-the-table transactions. Though, whether they're useful to you or not, that I cannot say. Well, wanna fill me in anyway? Okay, so these scans showed questionable wire transfer records. It seems it was a security company that burned down. But 17 years ago, it received very large sums of unspecified funds over the course of seven years. And the source of these funds was a smartphone app developer called Devonir. So, some smartphone company illegally funds a security firm. What for? That, unfortunately, I could not find. I tried combing through their email history, but still nothing came up. All right. Oh, and this Devonir? It doesn't seem to exist anymore. In fact, there are hardly any records of it operating. I'm tempted to think it's a dummy corporation, Kaito-san. Mm -hmm. huh. Now tell me that's not fishy. Indeed. Alas, that's about all I managed to recover. However, I do intend on looking into this Devonir a bit further. Seeing as there isn't much about it on the web, I'll likely have to do some extra digging. I appreciate all the help, Tsukumo. Of course. Just ping me if there's anything else you need. So now we got records of illegal wire transfers from a smartphone app company to a security company. And the guy who ran the security company, Ashizaki, was one of the founders of Crimson Lotus. I guess the smartphone company and Crimson Lotus had some sort of agreement between them then. Guys, this is bad. It's Mikiko-san. Did she leave? Where is she? I don't know. The window was open when I or got here. Or kidnapped. Mikiko, where the hell did you go? Is she seriously going after Crimson Lotus again? Oh, not good. You know something? Oh, uh, no. Numbnuts here doesn't know a damn thing. He can speak for himself. Now talk. Well, it's just that Mikiko-san might be... Sanda! Whatever she decides to do, we see it through to the end. That was the deal, wasn't it? You trying to turn Mikiko into a criminal? You know detectives are supposed to protect their clients, right? We are protecting our client by not letting you interfere with her work. You know, Igarashi, I really can't stand the sight of you. I'll just have to beat the truth out of you then. I'd like to see you try. Oh, here we go. Fact, I've been dreaming of the day I get to cave in your skull. Let's go, Kaito. Oh, shit, here we go. Gotta take them on. Take both of them on.
Where's she going? Spill it. Where'd Mikiko run off to? <sighs> Talk! <sighs> you really think you can save Mikiko-san? The guy who left her in the dust for the Matsugane family? Fuck you. Believe me, Kaito. Her anguish runs deeper and darker than you can possibly fathom. She's fueled by a hatred too hot to be contained. That is, until she kills her target. So what do you know about Mikiko, huh? A lot, actually. Collecting June wasn't all she had us do. There was another thing she asked us to look into. Yeah. Which is how we learned of suffering that would push anybody over the edge. Something we don't already know about? Tell me. I'll ask you again. Do you really think you can save Mikiko-san? You got the balls to face the misery she's going through and accept what she's become? My mind's already made up. I'm gonna save Mikiko. Don't give a rat's ass if I die trying. Well said. Then let's go. Huh? Go where? To Ijinsho, Yokohama. I'll fill you in on the drive. Any unfinished business you have, go take care of it now. Oh no, I'm ready. Let's go. To Eijin Show. Come to think of it, June's still over at the office. Better go check in on him. I'll take one of everything. Always gotta get the Taiyaki. Taiyaki always looks so delicious. We have plenty of food. Let's check our um skills here. Oh shit! Bruh, I have a hundred seventy-six thousand. How did that happen? A lot of things that are not unlocked. Press X three times for a dodge roll. Press triangle near an enemy with a gun. Um, cyan. Oh, Kaito! Where's mom? Don't worry, she got out all right. Turns out she never killed anyone either. Not yet. What do you mean? She gonna try to though. Whew, that's good news. Glad to hear my mom's not a killer. We still don't know who the culprit is though. And I'm running short on leads. Wait, then where is mom now? I don't want the kid to worry anymore. Uh, about that. She's still got some stuff to take care of. But uh, she said she'll be back once it's all handled. Um, yeah? What kind of stuff would that be? Um, murder. Hmm. Uh, that I don't know. Maybe shopping? Shopping? Now? <sighs> okay, then. So, what are your plans? Actually, June, 
you and I are gonna hang for a bit. We are? Yeah. After all you've been through looking for your mom, I figure we could both use a break. A grand tour of Kamurocho sound good? <laughs> Hell yeah! Let's do it! Then let's hit the streets. Okay! Who knows what'll happen, Nijin Cho? Better make the most of this because I don't want to have any regrets. Might be a good idea to take Jun around and visit Higashi or Hoshino. I'll head back to Igarashi once I'm done. <coughs> oh boy. That way, huh? Shirakaba, Kaito-san, were you able to find Mikiko-san? Oh right, I forgot about Shirakaba, I left him at the hospital. Yeah, I found her, but it's kind of complicated though. I'm at the M-Side Cafe in Kamuro Theater, would you like to have a chat? Eh, I'll stop by when I feel like it. Okay, so we can go visit Hoshino, Higashi, and Sakuru, whatever his name is? Amro Theater's gonna be over here. God, these guys are so persistent. Why do you want to get your face messed up so badly? I don't understand. Can I get some food before I talk to you? Gotta get my special pancakes, my strawberry parfait, and my mega fruit tart. I'm starving. starving. We're starving. Look at look at these two. They're totally related. Look at them. They're totally related. Let me get back over here. But they're totally related. Uh, now that was delicious. good. Delicious. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Ah, gentlemen, you're back. Yeah, just thought I'd check in. All right, so we're dealing with a serial murderer targeting the young business elite in Kamurocho. Would revenge against Crimson Lotus for the Natsume arson be part of that motive? Not sure. But I'm gonna tap Igarashi's brain in a bit. He seems to know a lot about it. I see. What about you? You gonna be here in town a while? Yes. At least until Mikiko-san comes back. Why don't you head on back to your place in Chiba? You can leave the rest to me. I can't. Uh, there are still some things I have to do. Oh yeah? Like, get a happy ending? What the hell? Don't be ridiculous. I, how do you even know what that is? I mean, I have been in Kamrocho a while now. Dear me. What exactly is this town teaching our youth? <laughs> huh. That was it? I've never once visited uh, a sex shop, nor do I ever intend to. Such acts demand love. Come on. A little rub and tug won't hurt you. You need a go-to spot? Just ask. Could you not? You are in the presence of a minor. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? I've never once Come visited. On. Okay. Let's see if Hoshino's home. Hey, and 
by home, I mean Gendalov, as he probably pretty much lives there, right? And maybe Saudi's here. Ah, oh, she's not. Something smells. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to use my eyeballs this right for here. this. Oh yeah, Genda Sensei said he and Matsugane-san were brothers in arms. Boss did say he got in a lot of fights when he was younger. Memories of Matsugane-san and Genda Sensei. The skill Hammer of Will has been unlocked. Ooh, I spent most of my SP, but I might have gotten some more back. Oh, I have just enough. I have eight. I have just over 8,000. Press triangle after getting hit. Nice. What have we here? That smell. There's something around here. Stiff boxers in the freezer? Hmm. What the hell? Why are we sniffing around for those? Yo, Hoshinoku. Flying solo today? Yeah, and Saori san's gone out too. Oh? Well, who's this young man, Kaito san? He's a client. Been looking for his mom. Wow. I'm impressed you came to make this request on your own. <laughs> Even brought my own payment. A 20 million yen watch. 20 million? You're joking, right? Seems to be legit. His dad's the CEO of some huge venture company. Says he jacked it from his collection. Say, would you consider introducing me to your father? Does he need a legal consultant? Huh? Not the time, Hoshino-kun. <laughs> Sorry, just a little lawyer humor. Uh, truth be told, I'd love to be a consultant for some mega-venture. Whenever I think about marriage, I reflect on yearly income and savings more than ever before. Although, Saori-san never seems to want to talk about that with me. Oh, Hoshino, I'm rooting for you. And I thought this DLC was going to be centered around, like, I don't know, Hoshino and Saudi for a second. And it's just gone in a completely different direction. Let's go see Higashi. Oh, looks like a status update from Talk. Hi, Tosan. I finally finished that job for Genda Sensei. I'll be back tomorrow morning. You ever find the husband? You said he tried to run out on the divorce proceedings, right? Yeah, he ran off into the mountains with his son. We eventually cornered him on a lake in one of those swan boat things. What? <laughs> you have any idea how hard it is to chase someone in one of those? My legs are dead after all that pedaling. <laughs> Damn, sounds like another day on the job. We always get stuck doing that shit, whether it's in Kamurocho or Ijincho. You can say that again. Well, I'll be back soon, so hold down the fort, all right? Sure thing. Don't forget to bring me back a souvenir. Ooh, who's hitting you up? Takayuki Yagami. I call him Tak. He's my boss and, uh, sort of like a partner in the biz. Don't you mean Takayuki? Yagami! Well, to an extent. But there's no way he could take me. I don't think. Whoa, he must be pretty tough, though, if you're working for him. Tough enough to count on in a pinch, yeah. I'll introduce you when I get the chance. Man, imagine seeing Kaito's boss in action. Sounds awesome. He is awesome. He is awesome. Hi, Lizard. How you doing? Higashi! Are you here? Mm. 
Yay. Yo, Higashi. Hey, Toanaki, what's good? By the way, whose kid is that? Apparently not mine. Remember the kid who was making a ruckus at Charles? Voila. Ah, uh, so this is him. Why is he with you then? Well, long story. We're looking for his ma. That'd be Mikiko. Whoa. Hang on, so he's Mikiko's son? Yep. Yep. And we found out she's still alive, too. No way! That's great! Aw, oh, hey, he's so, so happy. So this is Higashi-kun. Ah, uh, you were in Mom's diary, too. He's like a little brother you just can't rely on. That's you, right? Hey, Mikiko-san really said that about me? She also wrote, He acts like a tough guy, but he's sweet if a little wimpy. Not sure he's cut out to be a Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should what? go. Well, Higashi, next time you see Mikiko, show her what a badass manager you are and make her eat those words. You bet I will, Hanaki. <laughs> Hanaki, if there's anything I can help out with, let me know. Appreciate it. But I gotta take care of my own problems. I Fine. hear ya. But you better give me the full scoop when it's all over, got it? Deal. We'll all reminisce about the good old days. You, me, and Mikiko. Oh. Why are they making it seem like it's not gonna happen? I keep continuously saying that they're gonna talk. Makes me feel like they're not gonna have a chance to talk. Uh, if I need uh, any tea pouring, then I'll call you Higashi, okay? Otherwise, I got this. Hey, I got this. Clam, thank you for gifting a sub to Lizard. Thank you so much. Okay, now we gotta go back to Bato. We going? That was fun. Oh shit. It's one of them tough guys. I better save. And he just grabs me right off the bat. June, how can you even do that to somebody so big? Nice work. Thanks for the help. Don't scram before you get hurt. I hate these guys. Did I mention I hate these guys. Get him! Oh dang! It's good stuff. Got a little workout in at least. Ah. That looked painful for him. Finished up on your end, Kaito. Yo, look out! Don't worry, he won't bite. Turns out your mom asked this bum to look after you. Yeah, right. Like I'd ever buy that. No freaking way. Yeah, sorry. Didn't know you were Mikiko's kid when this all started. 
You tried to kidnap me on multiple occasions, by force! I hope you get struck by lightning! I was only doing my job. You should have just came along quietly. Seriously? Who'd be dumb enough to just go along with some shady Yakuza? You even have a brain in your head? Well, of course I do. You're the brainless one. Okay, fellas. All right, kids, settle down. Sender, don't we have places to be? Ah, right. The boss is waiting. You ready, Kaito? I'm ready. Good to go. Okay, let's hit the road. Oh, but the kid's gotta stay. What? The boss wants to talk mano a mano. <laughs> that right. What? Why can't I come with? Because I said so, twerp. <sighs> Jerk. Be that way. Be that way. So telling what's about to happen might be best if June stays June, back. Just chill in my office and I'll get you a souvenir. Sound good? <sighs> Fine. Aw, oh, poor kid. Oh, and by the way, mom's not really out shopping, is she? <sighs> You'll bring her back, right? <sighs> you bet. Okay. And I'm gonna hold you to that. Make sure nothing bad happens to her. Got it? That's a promise. You'll see her again real soon. Stop it! Remember, you promised. Stop! Oh my god. God, what an annoying little punk. Cocky as hell, too. <laughs> Damn right. These just feel like death flags all around, and I don't like it. So, Igarashi, why Jincho? Wasn't everything going down in Kamurocho? It just so happens that Rhizome, the precursor to Crimson Lotus, is having a reunion today. The venue's a hotel in Ijincho. And every founding member of that group will be there. At least the ones who are still alive. I'm guessing Mikiko wants every last one of them dead, doesn't she? Uh-huh. On top of that, her final target's also planning to show. The one she wants dead the most. You mean outside of Crimson Lotus? Who? The one going around killing the founders of Crimson Lotus before she can. What the hell are you talking about? Why'd Mikiko want to take out who's ever killing her enemies? They've got a common goal, don't they? Hell, you're a detective. Try using that old noggin of yours, why don't you? Primitive as you are, I'm sure you can piece it together, knowing what you know. Plus, Ichin shows an hour away. How about we make like detectives and go over what we know? Yeah, sounds a bit too buddy-buddy for me. Besides, I'm a punch-first, go-over-shit-later kind of guy. No, let's go over it. Yeah. Who's the guy? Who is it? However, if you were to, say, arrive at the truth on your own, then no one breaks confidentiality. Fine, fine. I'll bite. So, the real killer, huh? Her husband? Who would want Mikiko? Who would Mikiko? Okay, let's do this, Brain. Who would want? Who would Mikiko want dead? Even though they're killing Crimson Lotus for her. Huh. There is one thing that's been bugging me. That security company owner Ashizaki. His office was set on fire. But the point of burning the place wasn't to kill him. After all, he was shot up on the roof. So the killer must have torched it for another reason. Oh, starting with the motive. Not bad. Go on. So there's our problem. Why would the killer want to burn the office? To get rid of evidence. I'm thinking. To destroy evidence. There was some evidence that would incriminate the killer. 
So they burn the place to get rid of it. Hmm. Interesting. And? I think I know just what the killer was trying to hide. The... Hard drive evidence. I asked a buddy of mine to pull the data from a burnt hard drive I picked up at the scene. What he found were records of illegal wire transfers to the security company. And the company sending the cash was a smartphone app developer that isn't around anymore. Mm -hmm. I'd wager the killer would want to have these records erased. Hey, you're good. Didn't think you'd get your hands on those. By the way, that smartphone app company... You're talking about Devonir, I assume. Okay, how the hell do you know? I guess it Mikiko was knows. Mikiko -san, really. She requested we look into a certain someone. Over the course of our investigation, we learned about a dummy company called Devonir. And as you can guess, Devonir was created as a front for this certain someone. He used it to directly employ Crimson Lotus. Cover-ups to customer service. They handled all sorts of trickier than usual jobs. So you're saying this guy's the one who's been killing off the Crimson Lotus founders? That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, who could it be? Who could it be now? Here's a hint. Miki Gosan approached us anonymously. Why do you think she'd do that? Because she doesn't well, want her husband to you know. you guys could have broken confidentiality and let it slip that she was alive, right? After all, her plan was to take out Crimson Lotus without leaving a trace. Sure, but that's just one reason. There's someone aside from Crimson Lotus who she doesn't want knowing she's alive. As a matter of fact, Mikiko-san never even contacted this person about it. Even though, you'd think this would be the first person she'd run to after getting her memories back. Uh, wait a goddamn minute. Mm -hmm. All coming together. This is insane. Can this person really be the killer? Okay, let's see what options they give us. Herself? No. June? No. Oh, there he is. Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> this guy right here. The first person. This guy that the game is trying to give us really creepy vibes about. CEO of a startup called Inter Image Interactive and husband to Mikiko Satomoto, he's loaded as all hell and offered me upwards of 30 mil to look for his supposedly late wife. Oh, he would spend a lot of money to find her if she if he knew that she was going to come after him. He would want to find her before she was able to get to him. But why is he killing the founders of Crimson Lotus? Joya Sadamoto. You're saying he's the one killing the founders of Crimson Lotus? Yep, you got it. And Mikiko san has the same idea. What? So then, he was trying to erase his ties with Crimson Lotus? No. No, hang on. Crimson Lotus's founders were the ones who set fire to Mikiko's family's house. Why the hell would Saramoto have connections with the guys who burned his wife's family alive? Because he's the one oh. who... So you picked up on that. Then you'll like this next bit. I feel like I won't like this Sadamoto's next bit. Saramoto's dummy company, Devonir. It had records from 17 years ago of illicit wire transfers to Ashizaki's security company. Know what that means? No. Yeah, I figured that out too. Actually, it's weird. 17 years is way before Mikiko and Sadamoto got married. But Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus were connected back then, right? So what the hell's going on? 
I don't know, Just but... Just think of it like this. The Natsume family arson falls under questionable ties between Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus. That would be... Oh, that's crazy! <laughs> Sadamoto was involved it's in the like, arson? It's like, this is too crazy to be true! No. What happened two years ago was Mikiko-san learned the truth. And Sadamoto and Crimson Lotus tried to silence her. All right, Igarashi. No so how did she end up getting dance. married to this guy? Who is Kyoya Sadamoto really? Just who the hell is Kyoya Sadamoto really? The fucking devil. The type would make a Yakuza piss himself. The devil? How so? It all started with Raizo. An event club Kenmochi started during his college days. Rhizome was like any other event group. You get together with friends, throw parties, go on live tours, and make a little cash. Guess they weren't making much back then. Then enters Kyoya Sadamoto, a business admin major at the same college. He started showing up as their advisor and turned everything around. They all ate up Sadamoto's words and expanded their services into some pretty gray territory. Since Sadamoto considered himself their advisor, he wasn't officially part of the group. But his talent, his accomplishments, and charisma had them wrapped around his finger. And that Rhizome bunch went on to found Crimson Lotus? Yeah, mainly around Kenmochi. Sadamoto already started his own business as a student. By the time he graduated, he was asking Crimson Lotus to do his dirty work. On the outside, he ran his business like some typical ambitious startup. But I'm sure he had guys coming after him. Probably made himself lots of enemies. It's what happens when you straddle both sides of the law. I bet it wasn't uncommon for him to deal with unhappy customers. Yes, it must have been convenient having his own personal cleanup crew. Bet your ass it was. Sadamoto's company saw steady growth because of it. But eventually, that growth started to fizzle out. What was once a promising startup with tons of investment capital found itself in dire straits. That's when he set his sights on Mikiko-san's parents, the Natsumes. How did Mikiko catch on? When did she figure out what her husband really was? About two years ago, Sadamoto got hammered. <laughs> That's when she stumbled upon his email exchange with Kenmochi. Of course, that set off alarms in her head, so she dug through more of his inbox. It wasn't long before she knew the ugly truth. But then Sadamoto woke up. When he realized what she saw, he got violent. I doubt Mikiko would go down easy to some pencil-pushing civvy. Well, it turns out she did go down easy. We're talking about a guy who deals in the criminal underworld. He's very likely accustomed to using force. Then, what happened after Mikiko got attacked? She said her memories got fuzzy after that. She was probably drugged. And Sadamoto had Crimson Lotus clean up his mess. Can I... Can I hear that again? Can when I just did she figure out what her re read that? Because I missed some of that when I got About two years scared ago, shitless Sadamoto from Husbando. Sadamoto got hammered. Rare for him. And fell asleep in his study with the computer on. That's when she stumbled upon his email exchange with Kenmochi. Of course, that set off alarms in her head, so she dug through more of his inbox. It wasn't long before she knew the ugly truth. Mm. But then Sadamoto woke up. Okay. When he realized what she saw, he got violent. I doubt Mikiko would go well, Okay. We're talking he's very she was pro Did he really kill the Natsumes? So you're saying you know for sure Sadamoto had a hand in the arson? Yes. Though it'd be more accurate to say he was the primary offender. 
I had a feeling. About 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I knew it. I Sadamoto saw it coming. heard about a property development plan from Ken Mochi, who was a real estate broker at the time. Would have been a mighty lucrative deal, but the Natsumis were the only ones who wouldn't sell. Which led to threats and burning the place down. Classic land shark bullshit. Oh, if only it had stopped at that. Now listen. What makes Sadamoto such a devil is what he did with the info Ken Mochi brought him. He reworked it into a plan to fix all of his own company's problems in one fell swoop. How's that work? Kaito, the Natsume family was one of the richest in the area. If you include their property and stocks, they were worth tens of billions in assets. And since Sadamoto was struggling with funds at the time, he decided to help himself to that fortune. I couldn't pull that off in this... No way! Yeah. Marrying Mikiko-san was all part of his master plan. Oh, he's so gross! That's insane! Clearly, the man has a way with people. Call it an uncanny knack for charm. His college circles treat him like a guru. They say he's a living legend. Even his company seems to be under his spell. And as we know, Crimson Lotus was always ready and willing to take up any of his dirty jobs. So, you can see now how the Natsumes must have fallen for his honest young businessman facade. After he had the parents eating out of his palm, he discovered their younger daughter had a stalker, while the older one was dating a Yakuza. Wait, what do I have to do with this? You should know, Kaito. Sadamoto used you too. Me? Did he... Is he the one who set up the thing with Matsugane? For him to get shot? And the whole reason that Kaito went on the raid because of Sadamoto's plan? How the hell could Sadamoto use me at any point in time? Well, when Mikiko-san first met him, she told him she was seeing someone and thinking of marriage. But he wanted to marry now, her. How do you think he responded to it? Surprise, surprise. He actually supported it. He did? Well, he figured if you were serious about her, you'd quit the Yakuza. If you needed cash, he'd go convince her parents. If it was a lawyer you needed, he would have arranged one. He had lots of reasonable suggestions. He really offered all that? I'm sure Sadamoto knew how hard it was for a Yakuza to leave the life. Not to mention, the Matsugane family had its own problems at the time, right? In any case, he knew you were locked in, and convinced Mikiko-san of the same. You both did exactly what he wanted. Huh. Then, once you were out of the picture, Sadamoto made his move on Mikiko-san. I imagine her parents might have even encouraged it. And after the marriage was official, Sadamoto simply had to bide his time until the Natsume house burned down and their fortune was his to claim. Oh, damn. The guy's a monster in human skin, right? And it seems his marriage was more of a shotgun wedding. I'm almost certain the kid was conceived as part of the plan to push her into marrying him. In other words, June was nothing more to Sadamoto than a tool for making money. Uh, oh. uh, <sighs> I feel terrible for Mikiko-san and June. I am so upset. This is so infuriating. I thought he was... There was something off about him. Like... The fact that... Okay, so the first... The first clue that there was some something going to be revealed about something unsavory to be revealed about Sadamoto was that we 
got the offer from him to like help him look for Mikiko, but we Kaito ended up taking it from the sun instead from June instead. So it was like, there's a reason for that. So I was like, maybe this guy isn't that great. And then the, the cutting thing, um, him cutting June was the second clue. And then the third major clue was the way she, that Mikiko talked about him when we were talking to her at the Bato agency and the, the venom in her voice. Oh, but I didn't think it was going to be all this. I gotta say, I'm impressed you did all that research. No wonder you called yourselves Tojo Clan R&D. Well, that's what happens when you know society like the back of your hand. The whole R&D thing might have been my idea. But it's only because we know our shit. Huh. All right. So, how's it feel? That asshole Sadamoto played you like a fiddle and tore you apart from the woman you loved. We gotta kill him. It doesn't matter. I made my choice. Ha! <laughs> That's the lamest shit I ever heard. I thought you'd blow a fuse. That said, I'll feel a hell of a lot better if I can just clock him one time real good. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Go <laughs> knock his goddamn lights out. <laughs> Who thought we'd be getting all chummy with these Bato guys? <laughs> Lots of similarities to Soma. I think this guy's worse than Soma. 